Okay, we're back in the shop today, ready to reassemble this um, this XLT 600 engine. So to recap where we've been, so on the left is my original crank here, and on the on the right is um, my new crank. So effectively, what happened and why this engine seized, and if you recall, it was about 50 miles or 150 miles after our, our rebuild that we did last year. If you look at the as we tore the engine down, here's what we found. So basically, this bearing seized. And prevented the crankshaft from turning and when that happened it put a tremendous amount of stress on the piston so you can see these pistons are pretty new with very low miles and if you can see there's a groove down here and so there were signs of wear all across these pistons each of them have some wear so what we did and actually before I move on to that what you'll notice is as I spin these bearings so this is the infamous PTO bearing that typically fails Notice, can you hear that noise in the bearing? That means they're worn. And this one ultimately failed. So if you look at the new crankshaft, this is a remanufactured crankshaft. These bearings are yeah, signed. crank assembly, uh, we're gonna do a couple things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a little oil inside these bearings just to make sure when we, when it first starts, there's some lubrication in the bearings. I've heard people use two-stroke oil. I've heard people use gear oil. I'm going to use some assembly lube. So hopefully that does the trick. But the but the purpose is just to make sure that when we first start the machine, as we're working to get it started, there is some lubrication on the bearings. With that in, the next thing we want to do is we want to install the oil seals on the end of in each end of the crankshaft. So to do that, we'll just put a little grease in the, on the lips of them, make sure they're full of grease. And the point of this, these things are to keep air out of that crankcase, keep it from sucking air in and these engines are somewhat notorious for seized crankshaft bearings and one of the reasons why is these seals fail. So you have to be really careful. Let me put this to the side. Now we're going to work with the top half of the crankcase now. And what I've done with this is I've cleaned the mating surfaces so there's no gasket that goes on here. Um, it's effectively, we're going to put a, an anaerobic gasket sealer on it to, to seal the case. So I'm going to fill these grooves up with grease, work it in on both sides of the case. So the other thing I'm going to do is these journals, I'm just going to wipe the excess grease off the sides here. These journals need lubrication as well. So I'm going to use two-stroke oil for that. I've uh, cleaned this with acetone. I've put an air compressor on it and blown out to make sure there was no foreign particles in here. So this case should be pretty clean. So the other thing you have to be careful of is not to get grease around the mating surfaces because then your your PVC gasket maker won't seal. Here I'm just going to uh, clean up the, the mating surfaces and we'll get this put together. Okay my case halves have been cleaned and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a light coat of 1184 around this is again this is the top half of the case so I'm going to go very light so I'm just going to 
circling around all the bolts, I mean all the holes, all the surfaces here. So there we have it. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little welding brush around here and just spread this thin. surfaces are covered. So time to install the crankshaft. So I've got it propped up on two 4x4s four by, four by which will give my uh, connecting rods the ability to hang down and, and not bang against the table. Well the bearings are lubed and so when we drop this in one of the things you'll see is these bearings all have a locating pin on them and so you want the pin to be face up. So here we go. And we're in. A couple things to mention here. The first thing I'm doing is I'm checking to make sure that the oil seals and the seal on that outer bearing line up with the grooves in the case. The second thing that I'm doing is with the putty knife here you'll notice that on each of these bearings there's a little metal pin and those pins need to get rolled down into the recess corresponding resources in the case. Another pro tip I would suggest is to get a much more stable set of blocks that I'm using here. Um, it's much easier to work when you have a stable platform. So again, you can see with the screwdriver there, I'm just double checking to ensure that the bearing pins are seated. And that stops the, the bearings from spinning freely in the case and lets them do their job while the engine's running. Okay, just double checking to make sure we're all sealed up here, which we are, and now here comes the top half of the case. So now we're going to go ahead and insert our eight millimeter bolts. So I've kind of, when I took mine apart, I've seen other people do this, just lay them out. They're smarter than I am. I just, I did take my bolts. There's a special order in which they go in. And I'll, I'll put a picture of the manual to show you that order. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but if not, I will put in the manual. But this is the bolt sequence. And so these bolts are multiple different sizes. So we're gonna, I'm going to put these in finger tight to start. So they take a 12 millimeter socket and I guess I'm going to do the same order again and just get them down finger tight. These together we're going to torque them in. We'll torque them to 10 pounds first and then we'll torque them to the final pounds. We'll do it in two steps.
Okay, so all the bolts are tightened. It looks like I've got squeeze out, and it looks like my crankshaft is rotating. So, so now I'm just checking it over to make sure, first of all, that the, the seals are all sealed, which they are. I've got bleed out all around the edges of the gasket material, which is in the process of drying. Um, I'm going to see if my crank turns freely, which it does. And if it didn't, you were about to see me shoot it with a shotgun. My oil. Pump is turning. Gear's turning. So, uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to coat all these pins and um, bearings with oil. So each of these pins Has some oil grooves in them. So I'm just going to go through and make sure I get a liberal amount of oil in there. It says to liberally apply it, which I'm doing. And then also in the top of the these holes here, oil delivery holes. So I'm going to put some oil in each of these well to make sure the bearings get some oil on there. Ready for the next step.